Hello and welcome to this e-filing tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to submit your 2022 tax return. So the first thing you want to do is you want to log on to SARS e-filing and I'm going to show you how to do it on the website but you can also do it by using the SARS app. Your first step is to go to the left hand side to returns issued. Uh, if your profile doesn't look exactly like mine on the right top right hand side you can click on returns then you can click on returns issued personal income tax and then on the right hand side here you have to click 2022 and then request the return then the next step is to refresh the data if it's not refreshed yet so you can click refresh data and then you just tick the relevant or you can tick all the boxes and click OK now that all the data has been refreshed, we can go into the tax return. Okay, once everything has loaded, if it's not done, if it's not done by a tax practitioner, you can just say no. What I like to do is I like to tick no to everything first. And then the first thing I do is I check is my information correct here? Perfect. Okay. In order to do your return, you need to double check. You need to make sure the first one is how many RP5s did you get? If you got more than one or if you worked for more than one company, you should have more than one RP5 here. If you belong to a medical aid or you're the main member, the medical aid should uh, pull through automatically otherwise you must tick yes and then you have to fill this section in by hand so as you can see every time you say yes a new section will open up so if I had a travel allowance you can just tick yes I used one vehicle and then under deductions travel allowance you can put in the travel claim in order to put your Travel claim, you need to have the vehicle registration number, the make and the model of a car, the date of purchase, cost price, how it was purchased, and then you have to stipulate the kilometers data over here. Then obviously you've got um, interest, interest uh, income or other, other investment income that pre-populates and it would pre-populate here under the income section. So if you receive foreign interest, that should go here. Foreign dividends goes here. If you receive local dividends, that is a form of non-taxable income. And that would be if you tick yes here, did you receive other income and you click on comprehensive questions, then you'll see amounts considered non-taxable. You can just tick yes. And then you can go to the non-taxable side and over here you can put in your local dividends. So that should be fairly standard. RP5s should load up automatically. Medical aid, if you're the main member, should lo load up automatically. And also your retirement annuity should load up automatically. Then we can proceed to tax-free savings accounts. That also preloads automatically. That should be here, tax-free savings account. There we go. There's that info. Now what about what about other income? If you receive other income like renting, like renting out property, you can say yes, I rent out properties. I've got two properties. And then under the income section for local rental income, you have to put in the property, uh, the property details. So the address is normally you normally put in there the income, the rental income earned for the year, and then the expenses, uh, the rental expenses. And there you can populate rental property to the information as well, okay? If there are any red sections on the return, you have to complete the section first, otherwise you won't be able to submit the tax return. So that's rental income. If you're a member or a director of a company or a close corporation, you have to tick yes. But if you tick yes, it forces you to submit a local assets and liability section. This is just for information purposes, um, but it is required if you are 
a member of a company, oh, sorry, a member of a corporation or a director of a company. VDP normally wouldn't apply if you submit your own return. VDPs are normally done by tax practitioners and registered accountants. And if you made tax deductible donations, you can click here, um, do you want to claim any donations made to a Section 18A organization? You tick yes. I made donations to three organizations, for example. You go all the way down, approved, and then you say the total amount that you donated. So let's say it was 2,000 Rand. You can put in 500 Rand, 500 Rand, 1,000, and then you have to put in the PBO number. Remember that you can't claim uh, Section 18A <coughs> donations if you didn't receive a Section 18A donation tax certificate. What about what about the rest? So the rest, you tick yes. If so, if you have extra things that's not covered by the standard questions, it should be covered by the comprehensive questions. So there you have foreign income. Capital gain is to declare anything from the sale of property, the sale of shares, the sale of um, long-term crypto, and it's split into local and foreign assets. You also have partnerships in here. You have, if you have local business, and this means uh, you can populate this for if you work for yourself, you're a sole proprietor, or you're a commission earner, or an independent contractor, you can fill out this section. So if you tick yes, and I've got one uh, business, you also have to do a local asset and liabilities, but under the income section, you open this section up, and here you can put in the description. Here you have to put in the income, you put the expenses in here and then it will work out the profit or loss here you must state whether it's in whether it's a partnership and then the source code there are source codes i can make a different video to show you how to um how to find the correct source code for you but the most common source code that's used is 2598 Then uh, farming, if you're in, in farming operations, other taxable receipts. Other taxable receipts can be used if you earned income that is not like business income. So maybe you you earned royalties or you just had one commission job. You can also declare it there. Um, <clears throat> like I said, non-taxable income is like if you earned um, uh, local dividends, you can declare it there. And then other deductions, what's included in other deductions is you have depreciation here, you've got home office expenses, those two are often claimed, okay? Once you are done with the return and you are comfortable that you've completed everything correctly, you can just click on, you can first click on calculate just to see if a tax works out correctly the way you wanted it to. And then if you're happy with the calculation, then you can click Submit Return to SARS. Once you've submitted retu the return to SARS, click on Returns History, click on Personal Income Tax, go to the latest return that you submitted. So if you were busy with 2022, click on 2022 so you can open. So I'm opening 2021 and the assessment should pre-populate immediately if it doesn't then obviously something is keeping it from being issued immediately you can open the assessment and then you can see on the left hand side here selected for audit or verification if it says yes then you have to submit supporting documents if it says no then you don't have to submit supporting documents. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to submit your income tax return for the 2022 tax year. I hope that was helpful and have a nice day. Bye-bye.